Good afternoon, everybody. Anthony Aniano here from Rotoballer Radio and Rotoballer.com with your fantasy football week for waiver wire. Now, full disclosure, everybody, creating this waiver wire video Sunday night before the Sunday night and both Monday night games. So still three games on the slate. So things can happen. Injuries can occur and adjustments may need to be made to that waiver wire. If all they are, I will be commenting in the uh, comment section here on our Rotable YouTube channel for any changes that may occur. So it's kind of like an early look at the waiver wire conclusion of the main slate games. Uh, Yahoo roster percentages are a talking point, keeping it to players available in 50% or more leagues. Now, just a couple of injuries in week three. Justin Herbert got the start for the Chargers. Uh, seemed to roll up that ankle again, came out. He's hopeful to play week four, but who knows what happens there. Devonta Smith of the Philadelphia Eagles, concussion, he left the game, and two tight ends went down during the game, Sam Laporta and Trey McBride, both were injured, Laporta carted off, McBride looked like a head injury potentially, we'll see what happens, and obviously some other injuries may occur over the course of the next 24 hours. So we'll start at the quarterback position, two quarterbacks that are available, one of them I was a little surprised, and that's Aaron Rodgers, who's right at the cutoff. 50% rostered in Yahoo format. So he's available in half of the leagues. Good matchup next week against Denver. And that Jets offense is really starting to roll. Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, Braylon Edwards, Alan Lazard, even so Mike Williams, Tyler Conklin involved. Jets are probably my most mentioned team today here on the waiver wire. Thursday night, he went 27-35, 281 and two touchdowns, 25 fantasy points in a six-point per passing touchdown format. Aaron Rodgers up to five touchdowns through his first three games this season. Looks healthy, looked good. If you're looking for a bye, uh, a, a future bye week replacement, an injury replacement for Justin Herbert, or maybe your quarterback just not playing up to standard, Aaron Rodgers has weapons all around him. Second mention today at the quarterback position. I've been mentioning him every week. He continues to surprise, but we need to be mindful of Sam Darnold still. Left the game, came back. He's only 29% rostered, so he's available. 71% of Yahoo leagues, 17 to 28, 181, four more touchdown passes. Week one, he had 18 and a half fantasy points. Week two was 23.9 fantasy points. And this week, 31.24 and a six point per passing touchdown. He he's Justin Jefferson has not missed a beat with Sam Donald. Aaron Jones looks great running in the backfield. For the Minnesota Vikings, this offense is playing very good. The defense is good. Naylor, another touchdown for Minnesota. They're eventually getting TJ Hawkinson back. Sam Darnold making a case to maybe not be the quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings next season. We know they have J.J. McCarthy coming back. But being a starting quarterback somewhere in the league, uh, the former first-round pick of the New York Jets, Minnesota on the road next week at the Green Bay Packers. Now, running back position. Number one running back ad of the week is Bucky Irving of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 35% rostered, 65% available. If you watched any of that Buccaneers game, let's just be real about this. Irving is running the ball better than Rashad White. Rashad White, six carries for 17 yards, 2.8 yards per carry. Bucky Irving, nine carries for 70 yards, 7.8 yards per carry. He had three receptions for 14 yards as well, 11.4 fantasy points. Tampa got the doors blown off him, no doubt about that. And they do play Philadelphia, which is a tough matchup next week. But nonetheless, long term, if you have Rashad White, you have to have Bucky Irving on your team. And long term, Bucky Irving is going to play himself into the very least a flex role on a weekly basis. Up number two, similar situation as Tampa Bay. Braylon Allen of the New York Jets, the youngest player in the league, 20 years old, I believe. 36% rostered, 64% uh, available. Led the team in rushing yards Thursday night. 11 carries for 55. That's right, more rushing yards uh, than Brees Hall. Had three receptions for 13 as well. Finished with 9.8 fantasy points. Week two, he had nine touches. Week three, 14 touches. Jets play Denver. Braylon Allen is a must rush. Something happens to Brees Hall. Braylon Allen will be an immediate start without hesitation. He'll be an art running back too. He'll be a top 24 ranked running back. That's how terrific the rookie has looked. Um, so, and, and as bye weeks approach, he can easily become a bye week fill in, a flex play in those weeks where you're missing multiple, multiple players. Number three, if you have Josh Jacobs, pay attention to Emmanuel Wilson. Get him on your roster at the very least as a handcuff. 12 carries for 50 yards this week, 
two catches for 35 and a receiving touchdown, 16 and a half fantasy points. Week one, he looked good. He only had four carries in week one, but it was almost, it was over 11 yards per carry, four for 46. Week two came back to earth, but week three, a nice game again with 16 and a half fantasy points. Just as comparison, Josh Jacobs, 14 carries for 43. So it was almost a 50-50 split in carries between Emmanuel Wilson and Josh Jacobs. And Emmanuel Wilson had more yardage than Jacobs in the game. Green Bay against Minnesota in week four. And finally, and I don't know what to make of this Denver running back situation, but be mindful of Tyler Beatty. 0% roster. He's available everywhere. He led the team in carries in week three with nine. He led the team in rushing yards with 70. Uh, Javante Williams went 5 for 12. He looks awful. And Jaleel McLaughlin, 5 carries for 7 yards. McLaughlin did get in the end zone. Denver with the upset victory. But Tyler Beatty, 7.8 yards per carry. Finished with 7 fantasy points. So nothing outstanding. But this could be a running back who plays himself into a bigger and bigger role. If you have room at the end of your bench for a stash and hold, Tyler Beatty could potentially be it. Wouldn't start him next week. That Jet defense is stifling. Look what they did to Ramadre Stevenson Thursday night. But again, deep rosters. If there's room, Tyler Beatty could be available and could be a nice stash as the season goes on. Now, at the wide receiver position, five wide receivers to mention real quick. Number one has got to be Jawan Jennings of the San Francisco 49ers. And he is the number one ad of the week regardless of position. He is the one player who is an ad and start. People may have added him last week after the Debo Samuel injury, but he's still only rostered in 30% of Yahoo leagues, available in 70% of leagues. So now he hits the nice add to must add situation. He was Brock Purdy's favorite target, 12 targets on the game, 11 of them receptions, 175 yards, three touchdowns, 51 and a half fantasy points. Like I said, Juwan Jennings, the number one add. I'll outperform Brandon Ayuk and anybody else on that 49er offense in their loss to the Rams against New England next week. Number two, Quinton Johnston of the Los Angeles Chargers. Second week in a row mentioning him. Okay, only two catches, 44 yards, but a touchdown, 12.4 fantasy points. He's got 34 fantasy points and three touchdowns in his last two games, 12.4 fantasy points this week. That being said, be careful, Tyler Heineke may be quarterbacking for the Chargers next week against the Kansas City Chiefs. Again, an ad, not necessarily a start if Justin Herbert is out. Number three, Alan Lazard of the New York Jets continues to put up big numbers with Aaron Rodgers. It's what they expected last year, but with Rodgers out, Lazard became a non-factor. Not this year. Three touchdowns already on the season for Alan Lazard. 11 catches, 148 yards. Thursday night in week three, he went three for 48 and a touchdown emerging as a solid second option next to Garrett Wilson, 13.8 fantasy points. He's rostered in 30% of leagues, available in 70%, goes up against the Denver Broncos. Number four, Tutu Atwell of the Los Angeles Rams, 2% roster, 98% available. You wondered who was going to be the guy who Matthew Stafford looked, for, looked towards in a big spot. Well, you saw it with the long pass down the field late in the game against the 49ers. He led the team in targets with five. Receptions with four, with yards with 93, got in and did not get in the end zone, however. So 13.3 fantasy points. Kyron Williams got all the end zone work for the Rams. A big game for him against the Chicago Bears on the road next week. Atwell available in 98% of leagues. So if you've lost Puka Nakua, if you've lost Cooper Cup, 2 2 Atwell. And if you remember, Atwell had terrific success last season while Cooper Cup was out. So 2 2 Atwell playing himself into a fantasy role as a flex option. And finally, number five at the wide receiver position, Calvin Austin. He's available everywhere, 100% of leagues. Four for 95 and a touchdown on five targets. Became a favorite target of Justin Fields. Second on the team in targets this week. 19 and a half fantasy points. Pittsburgh on the road against the Indianapolis Colts. And finally, tight end position beat up a little bit this week between Kittle and Ingram and Trey McBride and Sam Laporta. Two tight ends to be mindful of. My top ad is Tyler Conklin of the New York Jets. Only 14% rostered, 86% available. Five for 93, six targets, 14.3 fantasy points against Denver. When Aaron Rodgers is playing well, he makes tight ends look good. He's done it in the past. He's doing it again right now with Tyler Conklin. And number two, Cole Komet, who had a monster game this week for the Chicago Bears. He's available in 60% of years of, of leagues. He was targeted 11 times, six catches, 95 yards, 15 and a half PPR points. He's got 16 targets in his last two games, 
Chicago goes up against the Los Angeles Rams next week. So to recap, my week four waiver wire priority ads at the quarterback position, Aaron, Ronald, Aaron Rodgers and Sam Darnold. Running backs, Bucky Irving, Braylon Allen, Emmanuel Wilson, and Tyler Beatty. At the wide receiver position, we go Jawan Jennings, Quinton Johnston, Alan Lazard, Tutu Atwell, and Calvin Austin III. And finally, at the tight end position, Tyler Conklin and Cole Komet. Honorable mention, by the way, to Trey Tucker of the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders played behind all game. I'm not buying into it, although he did have a touchdown. Tough matchup against the Cleveland secondary, however, next week. All right, everybody, don't forget, head over to rotobola.com right now. Sign up for our NFL Premium Pass. Use the promotional code ACES and save at checkout. Download the app. It's completely free. Take advantage of everything from the site right there in the palm of your hand, whether it's DFS, season-long, sports betting, whatever you're looking for. Like and subscribe right here to the Rotobola YouTube app as well, and give me a follow on Twitter at Fancy. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Rotobola Radio.